Think about this for a second. We get kangaroo leather from kangaroos, and then we turn that leather into football boots, but we always add laces, while the kangaroos themselves are using that exact same leather without any laces at all, which begs the question, do we need laces on our kangaroo leather football boots? Answer, we don't, at least according to Umbro. What's going on guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you a first look plus on feet video of the brand new Umbro Medusa 3 Elite. That's Medusa with an E for some reason, the first ever kangaroo leather laceless football boot. Now Umbro is a brand that's been around for a long time, they're well established and overall I would say has a pretty solid reputation in the football boot industry. They're definitely not the most popular, especially right now, but they've generated quite a bit of interest with their brand new Medusa 3 Elite. Their first ever laceless boot, but more importantly, the first ever laceless boot to feature a kangaroo leather upper, something that we have not seen from Adidas, which is obviously the comparison that needs to be made in this video because they really popularized laceless boots over the last couple of years. And realistically, we haven't really had a direct answer from any major company up until this point with the Medusa 3 Elite. So in today's video, we're gonna cover all the details on these brand new laceless boots. And full disclosure, these were sent to me directly for free by Umbro to make a review, but that is not going to skew my opinion in any way at all, as you'll soon see. Also, this is more of a first impressions video rather than a true review, because I've yet to play in these. I got them basically just a couple hours ago and I figured I'd make a video as soon as possible, because a lot of you guys have been asking about them. I will probably make a follow-up review in a week or two once I get some playing time in these. So if that's something that you guys would like to see, don't forget to support this video with a like. If you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, unfortunately, it doesn't look like you're actually gonna be able to buy them, at least most people, because from what Umbro has said, and they've been pretty secret about the release, they're going to be releasing in different countries with each country that's getting them being limited to only 24 pairs each. So we can assume they're only going to release in a couple different countries and at 24 pairs total, most people who really want them are probably not going to be able to get them. They're going to be releasing on October 19th, which is this upcoming Friday. How much will they cost? That I don't know. I just know that they're going to be extremely limited. And if you're wondering about a second release, maybe a regular colorway that's going to be coming out. Apparently, this is not going to be a general release product in other colorways until early 2019. So if you want a pair, good luck trying to get the limited ones. Until then, you're probably just going to have to wait. If you don't want to miss out on future videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification because I do post a video every single day. And with all of that out of the way, here's a first look at the Umbro Medusa 3 Elite. Included with the boots, and again, keep in mind these were sent to me directly from Umbro, so I'm not sure if this is a press kit. Given that there's only 24 pairs available in each country, I'm going to assume that this is probably the box that you get. You can see it's black in color, it says Medusa 3 there on the top with the Umbro Double Diamonds logo, and then this little kind of pinstripe of that teal color to match the boots themselves. And then inside the box, they include an Umbro branded shoehorn, being that these are laceless boots. It can help you to put them on, but honestly, I never use shoehorns. <laughs> Now, as I was waiting for these to arrive, I had two things in mind that I was really curious about, and that was one, the quality of the leather, and then two, the laceless system itself, how they're actually holding your foot in place with what I assumed would be a soft leather upper, and you do get that with this boot. But once they arrived and I actually had the opportunity to just hold them in my hands, one thing immediately jumped out at me, and that was how light these things are. They're ridiculously light. They immediately reminded me of the first time that I held the 2010 F50 Addy Zeros in my hand, which were mind-blowingly light at the time, and some of the lightest football boots ever made. So on a scale, in a size 9 US, the Umbro Medusa 3 Elite weighs in at 5.6 to 5.7 ounces, which is pretty much the exact same weight as those original 2010 F50 Addy Zeros from Adidas, making this not only the lightest boot Umbro has ever made, but one of the lightest boots ever, period. If you're looking for a weightless sensation, this is basically the lightest boot on the market right now. Moving on to the upper, it's made up of two main visible components, the kangaroo leather and what they're calling an engineered knitted upper, which is basically their equivalent of fly knit or prime knit like we see from other brands. Although it's a little bit deceptive because obviously the leather, pretty self-explanatory, you expect it to be soft. And it's not one of those leather uppers that you hold in your hands and they're almost like melting how soft they are. This definitely has some structure to it and will soften up as you wear 
them in. I'm curious to see how they're going to feel, but for the most part, it really just feels like a pretty normal kangaroo leather upper that's decent quality and you get a fair amount of it as well, spanning the entirety of the midfoot as well as across the top of the foot. And I'm kind of curious to see how these are gonna feel not having any kind of obstruction directly on top of your foot, something that we've really never had before from a pair of leather boots. Do I think it's gonna make that big of a difference? Probably not, but it's an interesting concept nonetheless. And then of course you can see there is this teal stripe that separates basically where the leather ends and the knitted upper starts. Now the knitted upper, as you can see, looks pretty straightforward. It's got some pretty interesting patterns, but it's deceptive in that it doesn't actually have any stretch to it. This basically could have been any other material and it seems to me like the concept would have worked just the same because you would expect maybe this part to be stretchy, but there's fused directly underneath this so it doesn't stretch at all. Same thing for these little side pieces. It almost looks like that would stretch. It doesn't because if you look here, it actually overlaps with the heel liner, which has no stretch to it whatsoever. So all of these exposed knitted areas on the surface are pretty much just there for the sake of looks. The only stretchy part to this knitted upper is going to be the little unnecessary extension bits on the edges of the opening that act as a collar, if you wanna call it that, even though this is very much a low cut boot. But basically what you have here is a solid enclosure around the ankle and midfoot area, and then just soft leather for the rest of the upper. It's really nothing complicated as far as a laceless system is concerned. And then on the inside, there really isn't much else going on either. Yes, there's knitted material exposed, but it's all reinforced on the outside, so it doesn't stretch anyways. And then the leather part of the upper seems to have a pretty regular liner on the inside made out of this mesh nylon type material that really isn't out of the ordinary in comparison to a regular laced pair of leather boots. So I'm really curious long-term, once this leather has softened up, once it will inevitably stretch, how these are gonna feel in regards to lockdown. Because out of the box, as we'll talk about later during the on-feet portion of the video, lockdown isn't bad, but it's certainly not as good as if the boots did have laces. Just a few more notes on the leather itself. It does have a decent thickness to it, so I wouldn't necessarily say that these are overly thin. And if you're wondering about this little pattern here that's embossed on the surface, it almost looks like a stitching pattern or some kind of internal reinforcement. That is not the case at all. This is simply just embossed into the surface for the sake of looks. The boots are of course low cut and do feature an external heel counter along with a little bit of extra structure here at the back internally. But of course the heel counter is attached directly to the sole plate, which is the Sprint Plus sole plate made out of P-backs taken directly from the recently released Velocita 4, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the video. You're also gonna find the pull tab at the back, which is much needed to help get these on because it's not necessarily the easiest task in the world. Internally, you'll find that the heel liner is a nicely padded synthetic suede, and then all of those little green dots are actually rubberized dots on the surface, kind of like what we've seen from the X line over the years, but a little bit more significant to the point where I would actually be concerned about these falling off over time. Again, they're brand new. The boots have basically just been given to a few people. So it's hard to say how durable that's going to be, but they do do a pretty effective job of actually gripping the material of your socks to help in securing your heel in place. The insoles are fully removable and as straightforward as it gets. It features a mesh liner on top made from a single layer of this black foam and it has all the information that you need about the boots right here under your heel medusa 3 elite they're leather they're laceless and umbro is british part of the reason why these boots are so light is because of this velocita 4 base which is made entirely out of p-backs it's relatively thin and it has really good flexibility to it there really isn't much stiffness to this boot which does add to the overall natural feel that they do have on offer which you would want from a kangaroo leather boot it looks to me like they were trying trying to modernize a classic leather boot by making them laceless, which to a certain extent, I would say that they have successfully achieved. However, the stud pattern, this is the FG stud pattern as of right now, the only one available on this particular boot. And it's kind of a similar layout to what you'll see from the Adidas brand with a couple other changes in that it does have this extra toe pick stud right at the very tip of the toe, the support stud in the middle. And you can see the studs themselves, you kind of have more bladed triangular studs in the heel and then a combination of blades and conical studs there in the forefoot. The only thing to note is that the studs themselves are fairly short. So this is going to be best suited 
for firm ground that I would say is a little bit on the harder side rather than being softer. If the ground is on the softer side with this particular stud pattern, because I have used it before on the Velocita 4, the studs just aren't long enough and the traction will suffer because of it. But as a whole, it's a decent stud pattern that for most people, you're not gonna have too many issues with. Now, something that I've learned from trying all these different laceless boots is that some are really easy to put on and some are extremely tricky. These are kind of somewhere in the middle, mainly because there's not a lot of stretch across the top of the foot. The opening though is quite large. However, it does have these grips in the heel liner that kind of grab your sock and can kind of pull them out of place. But it also has the pull tab on the back, which is definitely helpful. So I'll show you how to put these on in real time, regardless of whether or not I struggle. And for the most part, I do it the same way. I kind of turn my foot sideways, get it in at this point, and then kind of use my thumb as a shoehorn and then hold the front part open as much as possible. Then kind of just slide my foot in. For the most part, it's not too bad. I've had a lot of practice. And then once they're on, that's it. There's nothing to adjust. On feet, I have mixed opinions as I do with a lot of laceless boots. They fit fine, they don't feel uncomfortable, but they're also not very tight at all, which is very concerning considering not only that they are laceless and I can't make them tighter even if I wanted to, but they are laceless and leather, leather which is going to soften up and stretch as I wear these in. So if they're not tight out of the box, how are they gonna feel once they've stretched a little bit? That's something that remains to be seen and I'm kind of a little bit worried about. As with pretty much every laceless boot that I've ever worn, just standing here, they feel really comfortable, but as soon as I move a little bit, just bending my feet, my heel immediately wants to lift. And that's mainly because there is nothing pushing my feel into the base of the shoe. There's nothing forcing my foot to stay in place, which is basically what laces would do on just about any form of footwear, not just football boots. And you don't get that with a laceless design. There's also not really any kind of elasticated stretch to this laceless system. So sometimes they can make them fit really tight. And then with the elasticated aspect, it kind of expands into the shape of your foot. You don't get that sense from these at all, which is kind of why they remind me a little bit of the Adidas Glitch, but they're just not particularly secure on my feet, which is slightly concerning. They're flexible, they're soft, they're definitely comfortable, but I can feel my heel wanting to move. I can feel it slipping a little bit. Not to the point where I think it's gonna cause blisters, but I'm somebody that likes my boots to feel very secure, and you just don't get that from these as you won't from just about any laceless boots currently available. As far as width is concerned, they have some decent width to them, especially through the midfoot area. You can see right around this area, as I bend, it kind of opens up a little bit, which again is also a little bit concerning. They're just not overly tight. But I would say if you have really wide feet, you're gonna have a hard time just putting these on because they are laceless and the opening's not that big. But honestly, they're just not that tight at all. So I think that they will fit most people. And then as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing these in a size nine US. Typically I'd wear a nine and a half but the fit seems to be just about right. So for the most part, I would hesitantly say to go a half size down and considering that these are going to stretch, that's probably a safe bet if you are planning on getting these and looking for the best possible fit. I would not recommend buying these with a lot of extra growing room because once that leather stretches, given the fact that they're laceless and you can't tighten them, you could run into some issues. So in conclusion, just based on first impressions and trying them on, of course, these are pretty much on par, I would say, with any laceless boot that Adidas has put out up until this point. There's nothing groundbreaking about the way that they fit, and I'm really not anticipating anything crazy as far as performance is concerned. They feel like decent quality leather boots on feet, but the lockdown is not phenomenal, and that's really gonna vary from person to person based on how these fit you. The only thing I would be concerned about, especially long-term, because this does feature a kangaroo leather upper that is gonna soften up and stretch over time, and the fact that these are laceless, if they fit moderately snug now, are they gonna get too loose once I actually start playing them and they have stretched out a little bit? Because they're laceless, there's no adjustability, therefore sloppiness and just general heel slippage and lack of responsiveness and possible discomfort because of all that extra slippage is something that I am legitimately concerned about and I'll try to follow up on in a future video. So stay tuned to the channel for that. As a whole, they actually remind me a lot of a leather upper variation of something like an Adidas Glitch, but obviously a whole heck of a lot lighter and just a lot less bulky and stiff than the Glitch. I like them, they're not my favorite, and like I've said about a lot of laceless boots, they're not bad, 
but if you added laces to this particular design, they would be a whole heck of a lot better. Anyways, guys, that's it for me in this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Let me know down below in the comments what type of content you'd like to see as a follow-up to this particular video involving the Medusa 3 Elite, because there seems to be a genuine amount of interest around this particular boot that isn't made by Nike, Adidas, or Puma, which for me at least is kind of exciting. Either way, if you have any questions as usual, leave them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked to down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.